All right, it is time to start learning the bones of the human skeleton. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the pectoral girdle into the upper limb. And so here I'll give you a whole look of the entire articulated skeleton. And now let's focus in the pectoral girdle into the upper limb. So right here, this is our clavicle. And this is a good bone to start thinking about all of those anatomical directions, right? What features are medial? What features are lateral? You know, do we have to know something from a superior view versus from the inferior view down here? All right, if we move around to our scapula, all right, this is the, we're looking at all the left ones right now. This is our left scapula. And you're going to have different features on the posterior side than you have on the anterior side right here. You also have different structures that face lateral versus medial. And so those are important things to be thinking about as we're trying to learn the bones, learn all the different landmarks or structures on the bones, and also learn whether or not it's a right or a left. All right. Then we move here into the humerus. And it's important to see that the head of the humerus is going to face towards the scapula, so it faces medial. And it's actually going to articulate right here on the scapula, and I will uh, kind of go over that as I go through the individual bones. So then we have, like I said, we have our humerus, and we get down into the forearm where we have our ulna and our radius. And then we get down into the wrist where we have eight carpal bones, and then into the hand where we have not only the bones of your palm, but all of these bones of your digits. All right, so let's get started on the individual bones. All right, it is time to learn the clavicles. So I have right here the right clavicle, and then I have the left clavicle. So as if you were looking at them on, kind of on yourself. And the first thing to note is that we have two different ends, the acromial end, and then the sternal end, all right? So these are your chromial ends over here, and then the sternal ends are the more medial portions. And so what you would have is right here, they would both articulate with the sternum. All right, so you have to know those two ends. And so we're looking from kind of a superior view here. But if we turn these over, we'll see that we have a couple of other features that kind of form along here. And so let's take a closer look at this bone right here, our right um, clavicle. And note that we have kind of two curvatures to it. And I find that that can sometimes help us think about whether or not it's a right or a left. If you were to feel from feel your clavicle from your sternum to where it meets up with the shoulder, right, it kind of curves along and then you kind of feel it dip back. And so that's something to think about when you're trying to learn right from left. So if we turn this over, we have two features to know from the inferior perspective. And the first of which here is this kind of rough area. And this rough area is what's called the costal tuberosity. So remember, in your textbook, you have a table that talks about different names that are used for various features on bones. And a tuberosity is kind of a rough area. But then we also have kind of a raised rounded area called a tubercle. And here we have what we call the conoid tubercle, right? So you got to get to know those features because they're really helpful when you see different landmarks or features, right, on bones. Um, it helps you to maybe get the name a little more clear if you're struggling to uh, recall it. All right, so those are your clavicles. All right, next we have our scapula. So I have them set up here where we have our right scapula and our left scapula, as if we're looking at someone's back. All right, so let's take a look more closely here at the right one. And so this is our posterior view. So up here, we have what's called the infraspinous fossa. And a fossa is kind of a shallow depression. So again, we've got to learn all those different names for some of these landmarks that we see on bones. And then down here, we have our infraspinous fossa. So the supraspinous fossa, supra for superior, spinous, because this here is the spine. 
So we have our supraspinous fossa that sits above the spine. And when we get to muscles, we'll learn that we have our supraspinatus muscle that sits right here. And then infraspinous fossa because it is below the spine and the infraspinatus muscle will sit here. So getting to know all these different terms and regions and directions are really important uh, as we go further into the class. And so as we move along the spine, we get to this feature out here. And this is what we call the acromion, all right? And then this here is our coracoid process. And then the right here, this is where the humerus would articulate, all right? So I'll grab a humerus real quick. And you would see that the head of the humerus articulates right there. Okay. Now, if I flip this to see an anterior view, now we see the coracoid process here and the acromion back here. We don't see a spine, but we do have right here this big surface, and this is the subscapular fossa. And again, when we get to muscles, we'll learn that the subscapularis sits here. All right, and so that is the scapula. All right, so here we have our uh, left humerus and our oops, right humerus. Okay, so on both of these, we are looking at an anterior view. So I'm going to focus right here on our uh, left humerus. So facing medial, we're going to have this head, right? And like I said, this head is going to be articulating with the glenoid fossa on the scapula. Then we have these two kind of raised areas. And so you have this greater tubercle, and then you have this lesser tubercle right here. So the greater tubercle and then the lesser tubercle, because the lesser one, it's smaller. As we come along the diaphysis, we'll see this kind of raised area where the bone kind of, kind of almost bows out a little bit. And so this is what we call the deltoid tuberosity right here. And this is actually where uh, one end of the deltoid muscle would actually um, connect to this bone by way of a tendon. Then if we move our way down to um, the more distal end of the bone, we have a number of features. So here and here, these are what we call our epicondyles. Epi meaning above. So they're, they sit kind of above these two structures right here. So if this is our lateral side, this is going to be the lateral epicondyle because this was the medial side because you can see that the head is over on this side then this is going to be our medial epicondyle. We also have this kind of big bulbous shape right here. That's going to be the capitulum. And then this little bit right here is the trochlea. And then we also have this kind of dip right here, not that little hole, but the, a little dip right here. And this is what we call the coronoid fossa. All right, so let me see if I can better show kind of it's this little kind of dip right here in the bone. It's this shallow depression. So that's the coronoid fossa. Now, if I flip this over to look at a posterior view, you can still now, well, you can still see the deltoid tuberosity here. You can see the head a little better. You can still see part of that greater tubercle. But now we only really see the trochlea right here. And then we see another shallow depression and now this shallow depression is what's called the olecranon fossa. All right, and we can still see these areas that are the epicondyles, but now the head is on this side, so this is the medial epicondyle, and this is the lateral epicondyle. All right, so those are the right and left humeruses. All right, let's take a look at both the radius and the ulna kind of together. So over here, I have our left radius and ulna, and then here I have the right radius and ulna. Now, these two will articulate together like so, all right? So where you'll notice that they attach or where they articulate, the head, this is the head of the radius, it articulates on what we call the radial notch of the ulna. So often these articulation points 
are named for the bone that articulates there. And so then right down here where the head of the ulna articulates with the radius, this would be called the ulnar notch. So I just wanted to point that out, something you'll see on a number of bones. Okay, so we'll start here with the radius. I like to refer to the radius as the golf tee. If you need a way to kind of remember that it's the radius, it's the one that the head has this little depression, like you could put a little golf ball right there. All right, so this is the left one, and you can see where it articulates here with the ulna. And so what you have is this tuberosity right here. This is what's referred to as the radial tuberosity. It kind of faces towards... Um, anterior, you know, this is anterior, you know, above it. And then if we look where it faces, it kind of also faces towards the ulna. All right. So this is our radius. The ulna, again, this is the left ulna, kind of has this U-shaped structure up here. And I often think about it as kind of like a, like it was a bottle opener, you know, if that helps you remember, you know, kind of what it would look like. So let's look at this. So this is the left side, like I said. And so the radius, if you're in anatomic position, I guess I should, yeah, put my left out right here. Anatomic position, thumb side is the lateral side, and that is where the radius sits. Whereas pinky side is more medial, and so this is where the ulna would be. All right. So here we have our radius. You have the head of the radius right here, right at the top here. Then you have this kind of rough region right here called the radial tuberosity. As we go down along, you can see this kind of pointed region right here along the diaphysis. And this is what is called the interosseous border. Okay. And then down at the bottom, you have the ulnar notch because this right here is where the head of the ulna would articulate. So that's the ulnar notch. And then you can see a little pointed region right here, and that's what's called the styloid process. So the styloid process, if I were to set this down, the styloid process is going to be more lateral on this bone. If I show a closer look here on the ulna, again, here's that radial notch, that little region where the head of the radius articulates. But then up on this U-shaped area, we've got three parts to learn. You have the olecranon. You have the coronoid process right here. And then the dip in between them is the trochlear notch. And so I'm going to bring in the humerus to kind of show what happens here. So if we articulate these together... This is kind of a, is what we call a hinge joint. Well, it's a synovial joint, but it's also a hinge joint because it moves in this direction, kind of like a hinge. So this is the olecranon of the ulna. Well, it articulates right here with the olecranon fossa that we see on the back of the humerus, right on the posterior side of the humerus. This is the trochlea of the humerus. Well, this moves along the trochlea. And then as we bend our arm, you can see that that coronoid process right here would come right in here to where we have that coronoid fossa. All right, so there we go. And so that is your radius and ulna. And again, these are the lefts and these are the rights. And so we have to remember little things like, oh, the styloid process on the ulna is going to be lateral. I'm sorry, on the radius, the styloid process on the radius is going to be lateral, but the styloid process right here on the ulna is more medial. The ulna also has this pointed region, just like the radius, called the interosseous border. And so what we'll find is between these two interosseous borders, there would be what we call an interosseous membrane. All right, and that is the radius and the ulna. All right, last but not least, we get here into the wrist and hand. And so in the wrist, we have eight carpal bones right down here. So let me bring this a little closer to you. 
And this is an anterior view. So we have the thumb side, which is going to be lateral. And that makes this side medial. And then we have two rows of four bones, one, two, three, and four, and then one, two, three, and four. So this row here is gonna be our distal row, and this row here is gonna be our proximal row. So starting from the lateral side on the distal row, we have our trapezium, our trapezoid, our capitate, and our hamate. Now, on our exam, I will only show an anterior view, but a good way to know anterior view is on this hamate, you see that little thing sticking up right here. You don't see that on a posterior view. Okay, so then we have our proximal row, and again, starting from lateral to medial, we have our scaphoid, we have our lunate, and then we have the triquetrum, and then right here, this one is the pisiform. All right, so those are your eight carpal bones. As we move into the palm of the hand, we have our metacarpals. And so this is metacarpal one, metacarpal two, metacarpal three, metacarpal four, metacarpal five. Now we use Roman numerals for numbering um, these bones. So we're not gonna use the Arabic form of the one through five, we'll use the Roman numerals. All right, and then I'm gonna put this down so we can go through what we call the phalanges of our digits. All right, now that I've got those all sorted out, let's go ahead and take a look at our digits and what we call the phalanges. Now, the singular term for phalanges would be phalanx, all right? And we always include whether it's digit one, two, three, four, or five. So what you'll notice here in digit one, what we also refer to as the pollux, that's gonna be your thumb, all right? So we have our proximal phalanx one and our distal phalanx one. But in digits two through five, we actually have three phalanges in each digit. So I'll show you on digit two, but this would be the proximal phalanx one, middle phalanx one, I'm sorry, proximal phalanx two, middle phalanx two, and distal phalanx two. And then it would be the same for digits three, four, and five. All right, and that is the end of our uh, pectoral girdle into our upper limb.